With the high gas prices, is now a good time to be traveling in an RV? And with the diesel shortage, what do we do? Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz. And I'm Paul. And these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence, and live amazing. Well, Paul and I are actually pushing past fear right now. Um, if you don't know, we are full-time RVers. We've been on the road three and a half years. And like everyone in the country, we're noticing the high gas prices and we're in a part of the country where there is actually a diesel shortage. So in this video, we're going to take you through our thought process of whether we should stop travel, slow down travel, um, or do something different. How are we going to deal with the high gas prices and also the fact that we just got this bulletin that said it's going to be hard to find diesel where we're headed. The Northeast right now is is got a diesel shortage and there's a chance that when we're traveling we're going to pull into a filling station and there won't be any diesel to be had. I know and if you're sitting at home you know let's say you are in Virginia and you have plans to go to Pennsylvania or New York you might be wondering well should I even do those plans? You know, in our situation, Paul does all the worrying. I mean, all the worrying. I do no worrying at all because I know that Paul will have thought of something to worry about and, and focus on that, right? Well, somebody's got to worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's the kind of person that, you know. Glass half, half empty. Yes. Well, yes. we actually talked about, okay, we found out about this diesel shortage and he's like, okay, well, maybe we should get a auxiliary gas tank an in bed tank you can get them from 30 to 100 gallons i imagine you can get them bigger than that but with the fifth wheel hitch in the back you really you probably can't go above 80 gallon for our truck things are just so unpredictable right now so that may be one thing to, to do is to get an auxiliary gas tank so you can travel further between gas stations or even get some jerry cans. I think with us, we've decided not to do either. We're pushing our weight limit. We've got a generator taking up the space right now in the bed where the auxiliary tank would be going. Let's talk about, you know, about gas mileage, because if you're in our beer, I mean, gas can be a big part of your monthly expense, gas or diesel. So if you have a, a drivable, like if you have a class A motor home, if you have a class C, you're probably getting on the gas side, what, six to eight miles to the gallon, maybe? Yeah, maybe a little better than that, but not much. Maybe, yeah, I would say eight to 10, probably. Now, we have neighbors right now that have a big pusher. Um, it's big a big diesel. It's a Prevo, and, and I asked him what kind of gas mileage he gets, and he said five to six. It can be a substantial part of the expense. Now we have a fifth wheel, we pull it with a pickup truck, a 2500, and what is our gas mileage when we're pulling? Oh, Nine, it's diesel. 910 when we're in tow, up to 16-ish when we're deadheading. So let's talk about how much gas prices have gone up in such a short amount of time. So in September, which let's say that's the end of camping season for you, the national average gas prices were around 328 for regular and 330 to 340 for diesel. So, you know, that's that's a big difference from what it is now. The national average is $4.48 for regular and it looks to be about 550 for diesel. And as we're recording this, it is in mid-May. Yeah, we just filled up. The cheapest diesel in town was at the Sam's Club, and it was five fifty-five. And what did we pay for diesel in the month of September last year? I keep track of every dime we spend, and and um, we paid between two eighty-nine and three forty-nine in September of uh, twenty-one. So we took our highest usage month from about a year ago, a little more than a year ago and we used 163 gallons of fuel. Yes, this was in March of last year. We filled up a bunch of times and yeah. we used 163 gallons and we paid how much for that month? 823, I think. Yeah, 823. And, and we thought, well, let's just plug in today's prices. In March of last year, we actually were in California. So we were in kind of a, a higher priced gas place, putting in what the prices are today. We used what we paid yesterday. We used the 555 number, multiplied it out with the 163 gallons, and 
and it what was it nine hundred and thirty dollars? Nine hundred and four. Nine hundred and four. So it's really it's like eighty dollars it, more. It was an eighty dollar difference for that month, that high use month, which actually made me feel a little better because it was like, oh, it's only eighty dollars more for the month. Okay, so now actually it would be if we had stayed in the exact same area so we could compare the exact same location, California's average for diesel right now is six fifty four. So that would have been a dollar more a gallon. So that would have been another hundred and sixty three dollars. Yeah, so that... one sixty three and eighty is what, like two hundred and forty something dollars more. Yeah, and that's certainly a bigger hit on the budget. The gas prices don't seem to get any higher than they are in California. The second highest state seemed to be Washington. And then the third, believe it or not, is Vermont and Virginia. So what I'm using for uh, national averages, which may help you in your planning, I'm using AAA and they update the national averages every day. They don't seem to update the diesel average. They just do the national average for regular, but you can flip it over to diesel and actually see. So if you have a trip planned, let's say from Washington to Florida, I was just listening to the radio and somebody was talking about, well, I have a trip planned from Washington state all the way down to Florida. And I'm not sure I want to go because of gas prices. What would you advise them? You certainly just have to know your, your level of pain, uh, your pain threshold for the cost of fuel. Plus, I mean, can your budget handle it? It really is just going to come down to that. Particularly if you're not using diesel, if you don't have to worry about the diesel shortage, it's just, you know, am I going to take this big trip I've been planning for years? If you can afford it and if you can make it work, my recommendation would be to do it because I think life is short. It took me 26 years to come out here and start living RV life. And I think experiences are so valuable, but if it's gonna just break you to spend that money, then look at ways you can make the trip shorter. I mean, it's so much fun to vacation in your own backyard. We're staying in a county park, which is lovely. We actually have neighbors that, are, that live six minutes away from this park and they're having a great time. So you don't have to travel hundreds of miles away to enjoy RV life. You could travel six minutes away like our neighbors are. Sorry, I'm looking at the, we're passing some, some historic looking buildings. Of. Yeah, we are in downtown Leesburg, Virginia right now, and we have never seen it before. So <laughs> it's definitely bumpy road. This is really cute. Yeah, this is quite something. Mm -hmm. And this is the, this is the joy of traveling. I mean, you get to see things that you've never seen you, and uh, yeah, experience places that you've never gone to. For me, it's it's definitely worth the, the cost of fuel, although, Every time I pull into a uh, fuel station, I'm about to hyperventilate. It's getting painful. So the really scary part is this diesel shortage. We saw a message from, I believe it was Loves. Loves they yeah. sent it out to all the truckers saying, be aware that there is a very tight inventory. And we have to travel in the area that they're talking about. Yeah, we have a commitment. We're heading right to the area where they're warning that stations may run out of fuel. Right. So if you have an option to not go where there is a diesel shortage, we would recommend you take that option. We're going to be traveling and we're going to fill up when we get to three quarters. Yeah, we're just going to keep the tank as full as possible um, during this trip. And it's going to take extra time because every fuel stop adds 20 minutes, roughly. We're going to be using Gas Buddy. We're going to be looking and then we're gonna be calling and saying, okay, do you have any fuel? And find out, because we're gonna be traveling on the interstate, we don't wanna to have to keep getting off. Right, you yeah, know. we don't wanna get off and get into a gas station and say, you know, the cupboards are bare, <laughs> Go, you know, move on. Phone calls, hopefully, you know, we can get a live person on the other end. These are definitely uh, trying times right now. But share what our neighbor said. When I told our neighbor that, you know, Paul was, you know, Paul was freaking out. Paul, Paul, like I said, he's a big warrior and he was really freaking out over this. What did Rich say to you? Well, he was pointed out that if they really do run out of fuel, I mean, if the, the, the this area of the country will come to a screeching halt. I mean, everything is delivered by truck. So your, the grocery stores will run out of food, the, you know, everything, so, everything is tied to, to trucks being able to move. So what Rich said was, 
it's not going to happen. They're not going to let that happen. They're not going to let the whole section of the country come to a screeching halt. They have to make sure that there's enough fuel so that the truckers keep going. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, I'm hoping that that's correct. If you keep track of your expenses like I do, just, just do the math and see what it adds to your monthly. It was quite a surprise to me. It almost made me think, what am I, you know, what am I worried about? It d doesn't seem to be anything to worry about at this point. If you are a full-time RVer, look at ways you know, to slow down your travel so that you can decrease that expense. We just did a video about traveling and working at KOAs where you stop for three to six months at a time, and that will definitely help cut your fuel bill. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, the months that we've stayed stationary, our fuel costs have dropped precipitously. I mean, they just come down by hundreds yeah. in, in some cases. So tell us your fears about this whole fuel situation. And is it going to change your RV travel plans? Well, let me just see what the gas prices are where we're going. I haven't checked for a couple days. I'm going to look at Gas Buddy. Oh my gosh. Uh oh. They're, they're higher. 